Well, I love to sing my country song But there's one thing that brings me more joy That's sitting right down to your tasty meal Guess you could call me the hunting cowboy I might find it in a trailer or a restaurant Or maybe at my cousin's in a rose Shoot, I've even been known to cook it for myself That's right, I'm the hunter cowboy Cowboy. Oh, let's eat, kids. Hello, gang. It's Eric Nesnik, the Hungry Cowboy. Brand new episode of the Hungry Cowboy starts right now. I am at the flat. Oh, where am I? I'm at the Flat Creek. Flat Creek Estate. It's a vineyard just outside of Marble Falls, Texas, and I need to make a confession. If that camera's any good at all, you can probably see this. What this is, is, well, kids, it's wine. The magic of editing usually allows us to go back and forth and do this segment here and this segment here and flip them all around and do some splicing and cutting and pasting. But when you're an idiot and you spill wine all over yourself, you kind of screw the whole thing up. So, I'm getting ready to leave here, but I'm just now filming the intro. See how that works? We're kind of backward. At any rate, this should be a nice, pristine, pretty blue shirt right now, but it's not, because as you will see later, I screwed up. I'm sorry. At any rate, this is the Flat Creek Estate in Marble Falls, Texas. It's a cool little vineyard that I've never been to before. They have several different grapes that they're growing here. They probably have mm, 10 or 12 different wines that you can try here. Pretty cool little place. I'm standing in the pavilion, which is what they use for weddings and corporate events, uh, groom's dinners, you know, rehearsal dinners for weddings, things like that. Cool little fireplace, lots of pretty views. And this building over here is the restaurant. They actually have a full service restaurant with lots of good Italian and some French fare going on in there. And then right over here across the way is the tasting room, which is actually downstairs through that door. Very nice little place. So let's go inside, even though I've <clears throat> already been inside, but let's go inside and grab some wine. So the tasting is over, and it was a nice tasting. Let's see, I think it was, it was $10. You get to keep your glass, and you get to choose. They start you off with a nice rosé. That one's, I guess, on the house. And then you get five more. Pretty good deal. And this was one of my favorites. It is a Moscato something Italian that I'm not even going to try to say, but it's an orange Moscat. Kind of a semi-sweet wine from 2010. It was a good year. A very nice vintage. The lady inside ended up talking me into getting 12 of these. And I still don't know how. If you'd like to come over to my place, we can share some Orange Muscat wine. I actually ended up getting seven of these Orange Muscats and five other Muscat wines. She let me mix and match. But more importantly, there's food in here. Hey, boo-boo. There is a big, big basket. That was my Yogi Bear impersonation. To have a decent picnic, you have to have a decent picnic basket. This is the Windsor for my good friends at picnic time. And in here is all the fun stuff that a person would need to have a delicious picnic. I have some, mm, not sure what this is. Some kind of a mustard based treat. Some honey, have to have some bread. And what's hiding in the cooler today? Hmm. Pecans, truffles, tomatoes, a pear, fruit. Today's fruit of choice looks like grapes and blueberries. Salami, and brie cheese, one of my favorite Texas summer wine country picnic cheeses. That came out kind of slowly, didn't it? I'm going to get started with that. Let me get some stuff plated up, make it look all pretty, and show you how a fun picnic can be had in the wine country of Texas. So this delicious Texas Hill Country wine picnic looks pretty much ready to be scarfed down. Nothing fancy going on here. This is something you could pick up at the grocery store in five minutes. Head in there. You don't need many things at all. You need some like a baguette or some French bread, then you're just gonna slice nice and thinly. On that, slather on some delicious brie cheese. Brie cheese you can get in a couple different ways. They've got the fun little wheels that 
have the rind on them, yeah, a little more difficult to work with. It's probably better brie cheese, but you can also do the, I can't remember the company that makes it, but they come in a little, little triangle thing. You just unwrap it and it's just straight up brie cheese. Easier, slap it on there, spread it. And on that, I love to throw salami. Usually Genoa, got a nice fat content in there, very, very tasty. On that, usually I would slice up some Roma tomatoes, but today at home I had too many of the little, little cherry varieties, so I brought those and hacked those in half. Either way is gonna do just fine. And that makes a nice, tasty main course for your picnic. Beyond that, it's just whatever you decide on. Some fruit, today I've got blueberries and some grapes, and some more fruit. Today we're gonna to do pears, little pear slices. All you need on here is a little bit of honey. Dress it up a little bit, a little of that. Throw a couple of pecans on there. And that is a fun, simple, basic. Mmm, and tasty snack. And of course at your wine picnic, you have to have some vino. Probably, I shouldn't have put that whole piece of pear in my mouth, and maybe just taking a bite. I'm being a little improper now, but it doesn't bother me if it doesn't bother you. Again, this is Flat Creek Estates. I'm still trying to chew this thing. Orange Muscat. Eight bucks. Uh-oh. I must have had too much Muscat at the tasting. I'm spilling it already. Eight dollars a bottle. Very good. A little on the sweet side. So if you're a wine snob, I'm sure it's not good enough for you and it's supposed to be red and super dry and I like some of those too, but for this kind of thing, it's a nice hot summer Texas day. This is perfect. Good little picnic. I'll catch up to you afterward, but right now I'm going to dig in because it smells good, it looks good, and my stomach's empty, folks. I'm digging in. Mmm, I love picnics. Mmm. Guess that makes this my kind of day. Not many people out here. It's like my own, my own vineyard. If I listen hard enough, I can hear the grapes growing. No. No, I think that's a car. Mm hmm. There's a car. I'm out. <sighs> it's been a very, very successful Texas Hill Country vineyard picnic. You should always end a picnic with truffles or chocolate of some kind. Chocolate always pairs really well with any of those kind of white or sweet or dessert kind of wines. And come on, kids, it's chocolate. It can never, ever go wrong. Some of the truffles are coated, and oh, you've had truffles before. This is a truffle, you've had truffles. Get yourself a couple truffles. Get yourself some wine. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. I don't care who you are. Look how messy this stuff is. You can tell we're in Texas. I look like a kid playing with Play-Doh, or something else that's brown and soft. Anyway. There is something about good melt-in-your-finger chocolate. It's just, it has no real substitute. This snack is over. I'm gonna go try to get a little bit of exercise before I head to one of my favorite meals of the day, lunch. <sighs> yum, 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 yum. Mm, nobody. Nobody. The vineyard is alive with the sounds of music. Ah. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night. Uh-oh. No more dancing. Off to lunch. Hmm. Ah. 